Welcome to the realm of heroes and monsters. Story time with your host, A.P. Fuchs. Stories of intrigue, stories of horror, stories of superheroics, stories of monsters. Get ready, the thrill ride begins. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's episode four of the realm of heroes and monsters with your host, me, A.P. Fuchs. So welcome, sit back, and just have a short listen. So here we are. So the first thing I wanted to mention was, you know, I'm a collector. I love collecting things. I'll, I'll tell you what I collect. I collect, um, like I mentioned in the pre previous episode, um, I collect Superman action figures, where he's wearing his classic costume across various toy lines. And then I collect playing cards. I love those. And um, I've done showcases on my YouTube channel. Uh, show, showing off these collections, but I love playing cards. I got uh, probably by now um, a good 60 to 70 decks of various cards. Uh, everything from your bare bones basic dollar store ones to the fancy pants, uh, more expensive decks that you can buy online. <clears throat> I got some of that. Um, and now I've been getting to Hot Wheels. That's like my new thing. Uh, I've done a bunch of shorts on YouTube. Uh, showing off uh, different ones, but they're superhero Hot Wheels. That's a catch. Um, they're not just your know, nice car Hot Wheels. They're uh, superhero ones. They have to be because I'm a superhero dork. So that's <laughs> that's that. Um, and then I collect. Uh, I like Superman T-shirts. I have at least eight or nine of them. I'll probably have to do a video one day. Just have them all laid out, and you can see the various S's. And but one cool one I have is um, it's the Superman S. But then instead of the red, it's because it's a black shirt. So instead of say red on black uh, for the S, it's the S is comprised of the Canadian flag. So it's a really cool uh, shirt and I wore it with pride when I went down to uh, Oregon for my vacation recently. And um, yeah, so I, I collect that and I collect books, of course, because I love books. And I collect comics as well. Um, right now, the only thing I'm collecting comic book wise is the Nightwing series. Um, cause that's, that's the one that I'm getting, uh, the enjoyment from. Um, and <clears throat> as I mentioned before, Nightwing is my second favorite superhero to Superman. So, you know, it's good times. And I've been collecting Nightwing since like 95 or 96. So yeah, I got like tons of runs and tons of, uh, story arcs and stuff. But I also don't collect them where like some guys collect a character where like the character appears in another title. Uh, like Spider-Man, for example, if he makes a cameo in Avengers or X-Men, then they pick up that issue as well. Actually, interesting story. I went to um, physiotherapy when I was a teen because I screwed up my leg or my knee really bad. I uh, tore my medial meniscus, which is a kind of a tendon looking thing underneath your kneecap. Um, and there's really no way to fix it other than... Uh, uh, either physio or, and depending on the severity, uh, you might need to actually have surgery where they take your kneecap off and they take a piece of your hamstring and then they take that little piece and they stick it back into, it's like rewiring it and then they put the kneecap back on like a lid and that's kind of the procedure in, in short. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, collecting, man, I totally understand the the collector's bug. You know, you, you start with something and you kind of like it and then all of a sudden you start to fall in love with the thing that you got and then you're like oh i gotta get more and then you start adding to your collection and the next thing you know i'm well like me uh, i'm sitting in a in a studio just loaded with collectibles i'll have to give a, a studio tour uh, on my youtube channel one day and uh, show you guys where i work out of and yeah so the if you're a collector listening to this yeah i get the bug man i totally get the bug and uh, i get that urge and i get that Thing, you know when you go into a store and you're looking for collectibles that are within whatever you collect you know you're looking for that oh what if there's a, one item here that I don't have and I need to check it out even if it's a store that would like there's a good 95% chance they're not gonna sell it you're gonna look around anyway that's just how it goes so oh sigh anyway um, <laughs> I've been thinking uh, you know from a creative outlet um, I want to bring my newsletter back you know, I did a ton of issues. We crossed 200. I can't remember the last issue. I think it was around 230 something. Um, it's at tinyletter.com slash AP Fuchs. Uh, go there right now even and, uh, <clears throat> you know, sign up for it. Cause it's, you know, it's going to be coming back. 
um, it's an issue. It's a time issue for me. Um, that's that's why I had ceased uh, the Saturday publication of it. It's just online. It's free. It's, you, know, you get a free uh, little novelette with it um, as well <clears throat> when you register. Um, but yeah, no obligation on your part in terms of finances. It's totally like 100% free email Saturdays. There you go. Saturday mornings, usually, is when I send it up. And unfortunately, with Tiny Letter, you can't schedule uh, your sending. Um, you have to do it manually. Uh, whereas if I had <clears throat> the same MailChimp or something, then I could set it to go out Saturday mornings, and there you go. I'd sleep through it, and it would go out, and everybody would be happy. But anyway, but I collected them in books uh, called The Canister X Transmission, because the name of the newsletter. So uh, right now, three uh, volumes are published, uh, collecting the back issues. Uh, what makes the book special, though, are is there's a newsletter in each book that is not available anywhere else online. Like, you could read the newsletter for free online if you want, and that's great, and I thank you for that. Uh, but if you want to be like an AP Fuchs completist, uh, you can grab the collected volumes because you do get uh, a bonus issue uh, with each collected volume. So, yeah, check that out. And... Um, that pretty much sums it up, you know, I've been giving me a thought to the newsletter and how to coordinate my time in terms of uh, getting it done, because uh, each newsletter is, you know, they're fairly long, they're, they're a good uh, 1,200 to 1,500 words, you know, or so, so, you know, it, it takes some time, um, and plus I have to come up with something to say every week, but anyway, that's the newsletter, and um, that's, uh, yeah, again, it, it's a creative outlet, it doesn't sound like it because it's not fiction or comics or something, but believe it or not, it was, it was a way for uh, me to talk and get some ideas out there and uh, talk nerd stuff and also talk life stuff. And, you know, like if you're like, for example, a Harvey P. Carr fan, uh, American Splendor, if you haven't seen the movie, go see it. Just get it. It's, it's old. It's like early 2000s. Um, but <clears throat> it's, it's worth watching. It's very inspiring, uh, very encouraging. And uh, Paul Giamatti plays Harvey P. Carr. Uh, and uh, Harvey Picar is a real guy, if you don't know, and he did write a comic series called American Splendor, and he got various artists, uh, like R. Crumb, uh, uh, the, one of the big names that he got, he's friends with him, and uh, yeah, R. Crumb uh, did the uh, art for several issues, and I love uh, Robert Crumb's uh, artwork, it's, uh, sometimes it's off the wall, but you know what, it's, uh, when he does like serious strips, it's, it's pretty good. I actually have his um, adaptation of the Book of Genesis, uh, he was asked to do it, and it took him four years to do it, and it's it's fairly thick, and he, at first he wanted to make a mockery of it, you know, like a lot of people do, and, and instead he decided, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be respectful of the material, and what he ended up doing is he drew the book of Genesis word for word, like the, the biblical text is the dialogue and the narrative in the comic. So it's like reading the Bible, but um, you have R. Crumb's artwork there to amaze you, you know. So it's really neat. It's really cool, especially there's the, the scene in the garden, you know, with, with Satan before, uh, when he's with Eve, you know, and, and that's before uh, God condemns him to be a, a snake. Uh, but you get to see uh, what he looked like prior to that condemnation. So, yeah, there's some really cool tidbits in there. And, and then, uh, so I encourage you to check it out as well. But anyway, enough about that. We're here for story time. So let's get on with our flash fiction story. We're reading from uh, my book, Flash Attack. Uh, it's a collection of flash fiction. And as a reminder, flash fiction is short, short stories. Not short stories, short, short stories. And that's what we're doing for this uh, first season of the show. And uh, yeah, get entertained because, well, we all wish that the story to come happened to us. You'll see. Here we go. Episode 4, The Choice If being a starship captain was any one thing, it was about making decisions. Captain Red Trevor knew as much after serving on the SS Fang for over 20 years. And now, it had come to this. The majority of his main crew had been lost when the Starless boarded. What human could possibly stand a chance against creatures twice their height with insectoid-like shells covering their bodies? The ship's hallways were painted with blood and torn uniforms. 
Few of Captain Trevor's extended crew were still alive, most held up in the engineering department in sickbay. From what he could tell, the families on board were mostly dead except for some who had managed to jam the doors to their quarters. Twenty-four years on the Fang. So many people come and gone. So many missions. So many victories and so many close calls. Now the final call had come and Captain Trevor had to make his choice. A dance of fingers along the console and the self-destruct sequence would be initiated. Destroying the ship wouldn't annihilate the entire Starless race, but it would remove at least a large portion of them from being a further threat to the cosmos. But the people on board... No one knew what he was about to do. No one knew their lives were in his hands and were moments away from ending. Yet how many more people or those of other races would die at the hands of the Starless taking over his ship? If he could at least remove some of their army, it might weaken them for a time. Perhaps, even, weaken them enough so another ship could come and wage war. The distress signal had been sent out a long time ago. No other ship was in immediate range. Those innocent lives, the ship, the people, the unknown death in the future. The choice was clear, so why was he afraid? Perhaps this would be an unforgivable act, but he would take lives to save them, and it was the saving that was important. It was about the big picture. If destroying the Fang would start a war to remove evil from the galaxy, then it was a sacrifice worth making. Captain Trevor eyed the console and started punching in his code. Once entered, the screen lit up, asking him for confirmation. He thought of those on board, he thought of his crew, and even imagined some nodding in approval. He thought of the families huddled in the corners of their quarters, eyes on the entrances as the Starless tried to beat down the doors, the fear, the faces, the rapid heartbeats, his own rapid heartbeat. Captain Trevor closed his eyes, pressed his finger to the console, then looked at what he'd done. The countdown began. Thanks once again for sticking around to the end of the after credits. I, I appreciate you guys listening to it the whole way through. Um, that means a lot to me. Um, anyway, we're going to do another weird fact. And it's very simple. And it said, did you know that Scotland chose the unicorn as its national animal? And the reason is, is in Celtic mythology, the fictional creature is connected with both chivalry chivalry <laughs> and dominance as well as purity and innocence and I, I agree with that if you you know various tales of unicorns that we've all seen uh, they exhibit those traits so there's your fun fact for the day Scotland chose the unicorn as its national an animal <laughs> all right we'll see you next episode uh, and don't forget to get hook up with me on the web at apfuchs.ca and uh, check out the description for links uh, and fun and we'll see you next episode. Come back. <laughs> Bye.